Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. What I'm going to talk about today is I want to try to address the issue of applying dye or stain to a guitar which uses veneer as the top wood. Now, commonly in the past, historically, Luthiers have always used thicker slabs of wood to top their guitars. And that wood can be anywhere from an eighth of an inch or three millimeters thick all the way up to three quarters of an inch, which is what you typically would find on a Les Paul style carved top guitar. Rarely in the past was veneer used as a way to top a guitar. And for good reason, as you will see in this video. Um, one of the problems that occurs when you use a veneer is that it becomes very difficult to dye or stain. And some of you may have actually experienced that. I've noticed in talking with other guys who are building guitars that when veneer is used as a top, it can be very difficult to get the dye or the stain to absorb in a consistent manner. So I've had folks ask me, is there are are there any tips or tricks that can be used to improve the performance of dye or stain on a guitar that has a veneer top? In this day and age, uh, here in 2023 and beyond, veneers are used a lot in kit guitars. And you'll notice that when you're shopping for kit guitars, whenever they have some type of a figured top, whether it's a flamed maple or a quilted maple, it's usually achieved uh, through the use of veneer. However, veneer poses those problems with the uh, application of dye or stain. And the reason for that is because when you glue a thin sheet of veneer to a base wood, you have to apply clamping pressure in order for that veneer to lay down flat. Uh, you don't want it to curl or bow or wrinkle or anything like that during the gluing process, which veneer is prone to do. So you have to apply consistent pressure. This is usually achieved either with a veneer press or some type of vacuum clamping system. Uh, I've even seen guys use large sandbags to weigh down the veneer on the surface and to keep it flat. Uh, however, the problem is when you apply pressure to veneer and to the base wood with glue in between it, the glue, which is still liquid initially, wants to find an escape route. And typically when you apply that pressure, it's going to escape around the perimeter, either of the body shape or of the blank that's being, uh, that, the lam that the veneer is being laminated to. However, about an inch or 25 millimeters in towards the center, that glue has nowhere to go except to follow the path of least resistance. And because the veneer is so thin, the pores in the wood will extend all the way from the back side of the veneer all the way up to the top, sort of like a tube or a tunnel. So when you apply that pressure, the glue will squeeze up through those pores to the surface, and that's where it's gonna dry. And unfortunately, once it's dry, it's there for good. You can't remove it, you can't get rid of it. You can't sand it away or you'll sand through the veneer to the underlying wood. There's just nothing that you can do about it. And because the glue doesn't absorb stain or dye, it could result in finish that's going to look splotchy or in the case of like a figured wood, it, you're not gonna be able to enhance or pop that figure the way you were hoping to with a dye or stain. So what can be done to uh, improve the performance of dye or stain on veneer? Well, one thing you can do, and what I recommend, is the use of a powdered aniline dye. You take the powdered aniline dye and you mix it into denatured alcohol. And what that does is it produces an incredibly powerful dye. Uh, you want to wear uh, either latex or nitrile gloves because if you get the stain on your fingers, it's going to stay there for a while. So if you're dyeing your guitar blue and you get it on your fingers, you'll, your fingers are going to be blue for at least three to four days, maybe even longer. So definitely want to wear the gloves. Uh, now, as far as the type of powdered dyes that I recommend, like I said, it's got to be an aniline dye. Aniline dyes are 
they use pigments that are ground much finer than most of your other dyes that are on the market. And as a result, the dye that you mix up with the denatured alcohol will be extremely concentrated and very, very powerful. Um, you can also mix the aniline dyes in with water. In fact, a lot of the manufacturers will recommend or suggest that you can do that. However, when it comes to dyeing wood, if you mix an aniline dye in with water and you apply it to the wood, as that water evaporates, the fibers in the wood will curl up. It's, a, it's what is known as raising the grain and it will dry that way. So once the dye has dried, if you wipe your hand across the surface, it feels very rough. And in order to smooth out that surface uh, in preparation for applying your clear coats, you would have to lightly sand or rub it out with a synthetic steel wool. And when you do that, you lift the dye out of the wood so it kind of defeats the purpose. So using a denatured alcohol uh, will avoid that because there's no water present and it's not going to raise the grain. You can also use isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. You just want to make sure that it is at the very least 91% concentrated, uh, preferably 99%, because that remaining percentage is water and it's going to raise the grain. So uh, denatured alcohol is the best way to go, but that's not always easy for folks to source denatured alcohol. So if you can't get it, you can try the isopropyl, just make sure it's really strong. Um, there are some other products. Um, uh, the one that I recommend uh, as far as the powdered dye is ketidize and ketidize are available in powders and you can actually get the sample pack which includes all the primary colors plus black and each one of these packets of the dye will mix up to a quart of very strong dye stains so uh, I recommend ketidize I'll put a link in the description below um, it, it'll be an Amazon affiliate link uh, also there is trans fast powdered dyes. And um, I'll put a link as well to their product. Um, these are, are typically products that aren't readily available locally for most folks. Um, if you have specialty woodworking stores, you might be able to find the products there. But typically, it's something you're going to have to order online. Uh, another product, uh, though it's not a powder, is Trans Tint. Now, Trans Tint is made by the same company that makes Trans Fast powders. So, typically, where you can get Trans Tint, you can also get Trans Fast. So, I still recommend the powders. I just like to work with the powders better. I get better results. Um, I've used the Trans Tint dyes, and they do work really well. I prefer to use Trans Tint when I'm tinting my clear coats that I'm going to spray. When it comes to actually dyeing the wood and particularly dyeing a veneer, I think the powders mixed in with denatured alcohol is the best solution. Now, if you decide that that's maybe not the route you want to go, the only other tip that I can recommend is to use a product like Trans Tint mixed into a clear coat and then sprayed as a tinted lacquer over the top of the wood. Unfortunately, it's not going to pop the figure the way that applying a dye, an aniline dye, would. Unfortunately, it's just not possible to do it that way. But you know, barring any of those approaches, the only other uh, tip that I can recommend is not to build a guitar with a veneer top. Now, unfortunately, since so many of the kits are only available with veneer tops, the, uh, the alternative would be to try and do some research to see if you can find blanks or kits that feature a top that's thicker than veneers. So anywhere from an eighth of an inch or three millimeters and thicker. Uh, the reason why so many kit guitars use veneers is a cost cutting measure. Uh, when I use, like with this guitar, I have a half inch thick cap. And this is uh, flame maple that goes all the way through the thickness. And for every one guitar that I make with a half inch top, I could probably get at least 20 guitars if I were to slice this wood into veneer. That's why veneer is so popular because the lumber suppliers recognize that they can make more money taking a big slab of beautifully figured wood and slicing it into 
multiple sheets of thin veneer. So in summary, if you are worried about or are having some issues dyeing or staining the top of a guitar that has veneer, consider using uh, the aniline powdered dyes mixed into denatured alcohol. I think you'll get better results if you do that. I'm not guaranteeing better results. I just think that with the powdered aniline dyes with the denatured alcohol, that is your best possible option. There is no better. So if that doesn't work, you're going to probably just have to paint the guitar. So I hope you found this video to be useful. If so, give it a thumbs up. And until the next video, take care and stay safe.